Hello, GearHeads. Uh, my name is Dan, and you're watching an instructional screencast uh, brought to you by GearWire.com. Um, we're doing some little workshops in Sonar 6, and uh, we're focusing on things that will cross versions. So if you've already updated to 7, Producer Edition, everything is going to be here. Even mo most of these things are going to be in 5 as well. Um, but as soon as I get 7, watch for those videos. So um, what I've done here is uh, in a previous video... I recorded a, uh, a little sample of a guitar, um, just dry direct signal. And now I'm going to just record a little riff um, uh, and sort of put the two sections together and um, make it seem like uh, one real thing. So, you know, so it's sort of cheating, but, you know, everyone does it. So let's give it a try. Um, we've got the metronome going. Uh, if you haven't checked out the metronome video, please do. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to press record on our arm track and just play a little riff along with the metronome. All right. So that's just a little riff uh, that I'm going to put after the uh, little chugga section. Okay, so um, I've gone ahead and in the last video I tempo matched our first section for the first two measures. Alright, so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and put that riff there at measure four. Do a slip at it. Try and get as close as possible right there. Okay. And do the same with our other one the riff sample and now that we are just about ready to fuse these two together as it were um, we're gonna take a look at this button up here all the all the menus in sonar 6 are customizable so this could be in a different place for you um, it's it's the X fade tool um, auto X fade and it uh, toggles on and off with uh, the quick key X I don't know if you can I don't know if you can see if it's close enough but it is toggling on and off. I'm gonna leave it on right now, but we're gonna check out these options. It has uh, default fading curves. There's only three sorts of curves in here that are default, but I mean, you can draw in different ones if you like, but I, I feel that these three are enough. So the default fade in, uh, default fade out, and default cross fade. Um, the one that it's usually set at is uh, slow out fast in that's the default and I, I like that one because it keeps uh, both samples at equal power so I'm gonna go ahead and put those two together and if we zoom in we can see uh, it's already done a crossfade we click on this file we can see the fade out click on this file we can see the fade in so let's see how it sounds here Besides the crappy playing, it sounds pretty good. But let's take a look at some of the different uh, crossfades. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just erase these as such. And now let's try a different default crossfade. Um, let's do linear in and out. I have a feeling it's going to sound about the same. So as you can see, uh, it doesn't make too much of a difference with this sort of sample. Um, but as you can see, there's every different type of possibility uh, out there. Uh, say if you have a, a, a snare hit that needs to fade out quick and and bring in you bring in like another section of the song, a fast out and linear in might work well. Um, but let's explore the uh, different types of fades uh, when they're on their own, just for a moment. The default in is sort of the fast in. And let's listen to what kind of sound we get with that. Make us just a small one. And turn off our metronome. I'm going to go ahead and turn that up quite a bit so we can hear it a lot better. So the thing I want you to notice about this type of fade 
is how it's sort of almost a cut. It's a, almost like a cut in, but without a click. If we were to move the fade in all together, we'd get this. You hear that digital click. So basically what I use the fast in for is um, to make it sound like it's a straight edit, straight up edit. And that's what I think it's good for. The other two, linear in, well, let's, uh, let's look at the, fa uh, the, uh, the slow in one. And this is, what I, this is what you would use for like sort of a fade in. As you can hear, you can act, it's, it's an audible fade. So it definitely has more of a characteristics of an actual fade. And of course, the linear is basically splitting the difference between the two. So on the other side of things, you're going to get the same exact. So actually, we're going to set this to a slow curve out. And the slow curve out, of course, is much like the fast curve in. It's basically the inverse of it, and you're going to get a straight cut set of sound, sort of like maybe if you actually cut a piece of tape. Very abrupt. One more time. All right, and let's listen to the fast curve out. And this is the, the more deliberate fade. If we make, gonna need to make that bigger, as you can hear, and let's listen to that against the slow curve. Even though I've made it longer, it still sounds more like a cut rather than an actual deliberate fade. And then of course the linear is sort of the medium setting. So we've taken a look at the different curves in Sonar, how they're used as crossfades and fades in and fades out. They're uh, real quick and easy to access. Um, you can draw your own custom fades. But uh, for me, these three pretty much do the job. So thanks for checking out this video. 